Now, the exercises uh, we're going to do, uh, these first two are handheld examples. Uh, we're going to go through a design, a full design, that does some things with clocks and LEDs. Um, and also inside of it, there's going to be a small design um, that could be helpful for you uh, later on in your very long career. Uh, I'll get to that. Then uh, there's going to be a semi-handheld, and by that means, I mean you get some information, but not everything. Uh, this will be a Fibonacci, uh, Fibonacci design. Um, it's described here. I trust that later you'll be able to get to this page and, and read about it. This, I give you the state machine, or at least one, one possible state machine. It not, not, doesn't mean that it's the best or the correct one. Um, and then there's a padlock uh, design. Uh, this is this would be slightly more complicated if you want to ch challenge yourself. There's a bit a few ex extra credit. You get nothing uh, but uh, tap on the shoulder or something. Uh, there's a few hints about how to do this. And for this, I give you um, a starting starting design basically that has problems that has. Uh, it's not, it doesn't implement everything, but you'll have a working state machine to start out with. Okay? And then on your own, uh, perhaps tomorrow, or uh, if you're fast today, uh, or maybe uh, you won't get to it, it's fine. Um, I suggest you, you write a four-bit arithmetic logic unit that can do subtraction. Um, addition, multiplication, division. Um, you could do that with the, with the switches and buttons and the LEDs that you have there. And then uh, the advanced bit, uh, which also includes the UI transmit, is to choose a peripheral on the DE nano board and uh, interface with it. Or write a uh, a UART uh, transmit access to the world on your PC. Uh, that's quite feasible. And um, Julius has a, has an example design and uh, a lot of information here to get you started. But um, how many of you know the UART uh, RS232 protocol by heart? No? Okay. Um, so, <laughs> very simple. Right, that's the end of uh, this bit. Now we're going to go through the code. Okay? How are you feeling? Was that was that fast? Was that slow? Was that good? Was that bad? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I know there's a, it's a lot to take, uh, and I've just run uh, run through it. But um, we're going to have code. Where all of us are going to be here. We're going to help you. Uh, go through the problems and understand what is going on and how to solve them. Uh, I believe that the best way to get to learn something is to do it. Uh, there's a limited uh, benefit that you get from somebody standing in front and telling you what things should look like. Right, um, here I, I have some constants as we discussed. Um, this is where I declare my module, basics. And this is where I declare the ports. Now you'll see a lot of ports here, a lot more than we're, we're going to use in this workshop. But I left them in because these are all the, the ports that you may need for uh, the D Nano board. Okay, if you ever want to use a DRAM or uh, the I squared C, then it's already set up, it's connected to the correct pins on this port. Um, excuse me? Hold on, can we get back through the sticks and the outside and the rest of the time here? Sure thing, yep. So it's, it's all here, we're only going to use uh, mainly this clock. Well, we have to use this clock, this is a 50 megahertz clock coming in. Uh, LEDs, this is an output. Uh, the key is the two buttons. You see, it's a, it's a two-bit bus. The LEDs, is, there are eight of them. Uh, and the switch is also an input. There are four little dip switches 
that you'll need a, a, a pen or a screwdriver to move, unfortunately. Uh, I don't know why they did that, not that, but hey. Um, and that's the end of the decoration of the module. Uh, now, I'm using the constants that I declared uh, to define a new register count. And I want it to, it to be a 32-bit register, and then so I have to subtract the 1, so everything is, starts at 0. So this is 32, 31 to 0, so it's a 32-bit bus register. And then I define, I, I name a wire called LED out, and its width is 8. And I create an, uh, another wire button, ED stands for edge detect, um, another wire. Now, you don't define a size for that? No, because it's a single, right. so yeah, it's if it's a one bit, bit, you don't have to say, uh, I don't actually know what, you, you wouldn't write zero, I don't know if you'll accept it, but uh, no, if it's a single, you don't write it. Um, now, I'll get back to this, but look, it's over here, but the actual, actual uh, count is being uh, manipulated down here. Again, remember, the, the, the order doesn't matter. Um, you group things by convenience of where they are by convention. Um, now, this here is for convenience. I could use key um, bit zero, or I can assign it a meaningful name. So key zero, for me, is going to be reset, and key one is going to be called button. And this tilde says that I want to negate that input when it goes into reset. So it's not key zero, because uh, when you press the button, it goes to one. It goes to zero. It's active low when you press the button. And I just, I have my logic set that if reset goes to high, I want it to, to reset. Same for the button. Um, now, I, now I assign, remember I defined LED out. I want the bits of this size from here to here, concatenated, to go into, actually the concatenation here isn't necessary, um, to go into LED out. So counter size is 32, so I want 30, 30, um, 31 to 24 bits of counter, bits 30, 31 to 24 to go into LED out. And, um, and then I want LED 0, the first LED, to be, th to be connected to this signal, LED 1 to be connected to the button directly, and then LED 7 to 2, so 6 uh, LEDs to be connected to LED out 7 to 2, which come from here. This is LED. These are all wires, okay, and I use a sign. It's a bit, you can do it simpler, uh, but uh, these I mainly put out there to see that you have, um, you're able to assign to a, a variable and then a, a into a wire and then reuse some of the bits um, to, to go to the output. This is a module instantiation. Um, I'll get to that in a second. Now, you have here an, an always block that the function of it is to divide the clock into a much slower clock. So when you um, get digits onto the, when you get bits onto the LEDs, it actually uh, shows up as on and off because if it's a 50 megahertz um, signal, you just see it, see it like fully lit or dim somehow, but you won't see it change in state. So here I'm saying if reset, remember I assigned it, is one, Count is equal to zero. Again, this is not strictly necessary, but always good to have. Um, otherwise, count is equal to count plus one. 
And here I have what other things could work. Um, yeah, I wrote this for a 16-bit counter, not 32, but uh, you'll get the point. Count um, 15 to to zero. Assign count 15 to zero plus one. It's the same equivalent. This is equivalent. This is equivalent, and this is equivalent. Um, so different kinds of options to to um, uh, to use. Now this is where I'm using it. I'm saying I want to assign to slow clock a variable called uh, a wire called slow clock count slow clock bit which I define up there minus one. So that will give me the sixteenth bit or bit number fifteen of count that I want to assign to the slow clock. Okay. Right. Um, now, uh, this is the, the first the first step, and we uh, we're happy with it. So we're going to go and compile. I'll get to the edge detect in a second. So you go to Quartus, Quartus, and uh, you load up your your design, and then you want to implement it. So you have here. The implementation phase, remember, there is synthesis that converts the design into a netlist. There is the implementation that's placed in route. And then there is generating a bitstream, the, the firmware that is going to go on. So you double click on the assembler, that will do everything up to that point. I'll change the thing. Once you change it, it goes to uh, a little question mark, you think? So you double click, and then it'll take a while. Here, we'll do this, it'll say, okay, fine, pass. These things take time. For even for the simplest designs, as you see. Right, see? Uh, flow is successful with 103 warnings. Right, now we have a bitstream and we want to program it onto the FPGA. So we double click here and it opens up this dialog. Um, and it'll show us basics.sof, which is the bitstream and you hit start and um, you'll have the design on your little board yeah. so this will give you uh, the slow the very slow um, bits of the clock on the led and um, that's it very simple design um, now i'll get to I'll do the edge detect stuff, and then the simulation, and then we'll be, we'll be on your own. Uh, <laughs> right, edge detect. What's the point? The point is, say you have a signal coming in um, that is coming from the outside. Now, if it comes from the outside world, it's not synchronized to your clock. It's just a signal that it comes up whenever. It's asynchronous to your design. So it comes up, but in your state machine, you're looking for a single pulse of that input. So say a reset comes in, and you want only a sing sing single pulse of that reset. So you have to sort of edge detect it. You want to know when it goes high, produce a single pulse, and, and go back low to zero, and that's what your design expects. So uh, there's a very simple way of doing this. Um, <coughs> I have here a clock. It goes up, uh, up and down uh, forever. There's the input that goes high somewhere and stays high. And then there's the output that I want. It's a single clock. Sin single, uh, clock 
which means that if it's a 50 uh, percent duty cycle, which means that the high time is equal to the low time, you're going to get a high time equal to half the period of your clock, okay? which is what you want. Um, yes. So, and then, uh, then this is the logic that is going to be implemented. It's two registers um, connected to a clock. And you have the input. And when a clock edge comes in, this input is put is comes through to produce A. Yeah, that's this first first uh, clock here. And A goes high. And then this is connected to an AND gate with a little with a not not gate here for port B. So A is high, then the next clock edge comes to I think I made a mistake. Yes. Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, I just I realized as I was talking the edge is gonna be all the way up here. This whole thing. So yeah. Um, and then uh, the next clock edge B is coming out, and um, this logic makes it so A and not B, so you invert B, produces this output. So here, if you see A, not B, so inverted, 1, 1, 1 and 1 is equal to 1, so you get this. But the next clock cycle after that, A is already 1. Um, A will stay 1. The next clock cycle after that, B will become 1, which will turn this into a 0, so out goes back to 0. So you get a single pulse. Um, this is a few ways of saying the same thing. A and not B. Um, and in logic, pure logic would be but no, not actually purely this uh, other symbols depends on what discipline you're in A and not B, B bar uh, or as we'll see it in Verilog A and not B and not can be an exclamation point or a tilde it's equivalent in Verilog okay? you can use either um, right, how does it look like in Verilog? Uh, firstly we instantiate the module, we give it a clock, a reset, input and output. Input is the button, output is the button edge detect, which will give us a single single pulse, and we give it the slow clock. Right? Because that's the clock we want uh, we're, we're, we want our uh, state machine to, to run at. This is the module. Edge detect. Inputs, outputs, register A and B, and uh, an assignment. I want output to be A and not B, as we've seen before. Right? That will implement the logic A inside of a lookup table. <coughs> yes. Right. Thanks. <laughs> I did change it. This will actually. This will, uh, this will give you, if your logic is, uh, if your um, input is inverted, it's constantly high, and then it goes low, it will give you a pulse of, uh, anyway. Um, always at clock. If reset is equal to one, um, reset the registers, it's always good to have. Otherwise, um, this is a two-bit shift register, effectively. Um, the value of uh, in goes into A, and the value of A goes into B. Now remember, these two things happen in parallel, right? Um, so the value of, in the same clock cycle, the value, the previous value of A, or the current value of A, is going to be uh, assigned into B, and the new value from in is going to be assigned into A. Exactly as, as the diagram shows. And uh, 
Right, and then and then again here in our instantiation, we can use button edge detect in in our in our logic. If we wanted to, uh, we're not using it, but uh, I do output it here. Uh, here. So if you do, because it's such a slow clock, if you do press, you'll see a little pulse on the LED, on the first LED, LED zero, see a little pulse and you'll know that it's working. Um, now remember I talked about trimming the, the code being trimmed? If I didn't make this assignment and I don't use it anywhere else, the whole edge detect circuit will not be there anymore in my design. Okay? Because it's not being used and the, and, the, and the tools want to conserve logic. Their, their, their purpose is to optimize logic, more, more functionality into, into less logic. Um, so they'll just trim it out. Remember, I can trace the, um, the input to this output, and therefore it's going to stick around. Uh, that's that. Now to simulation. So we've implemented this thing. Now we want to simulate. So we go from compilation down here to RTL simulation. Right? And then um, up here, for simulation, 32-bit, uh, going through 32 bits is going to be way too, way too long. Uh, you could do things about it, but I decided not to complicate it too much. Uh, comment this out and just reduce those numbers. Um, I'll save that. You don't have to recompile. You can just uh, because it just takes the the very long um, and um, to simulate. You double click on run simulation. Model sim will come up. It'll give you. All oh, right. Yeah. Of course, I forgot about something very crucial here. Um, test benches. Remember, in simulation, uh, we're trying to 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 look at the functionality, the behavior behavior of our code. And in order to do that, we need to drive it. We need to drive that module with uh, stimulus, stimuli uh, from the uh, to the ports, right? Because we have we have a module. It's waiting for inputs to do to do something. And if we just simulate that on its own, nothing's going to happen. So, uh, well, unless it doesn't have any inputs, but uh, mostly you want to give it, um, you want to give it some some stimuli into um, uh, to drive it to, to make it do things. And for that, you write a test bench. A test bench is also written in Verilog, and it instantiates your main module and create signals that go up and down according to when you want them to go up and down and observe and then you can observe the output. So um, the convention is to name your um, test bench with the same name of your module underscore TB and name that, that module. Again, the, the test bench is just a module uh, that you declare. Um, it has no inputs and no outputs because you're generating it. And I create here a register that will function as a clock, a register that will be a reset, and another register for a button. Remember, I'm trying to simulate the physical stuff on this board in, 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 in this test bench. So I create a reset and a button signals. Um, I want to look at LEDs. Now, remember I told you that you need to set uh, your registers or, well, you need to set the inputs to a particular state at the beginning. So there is an instruction here called initial begin, and you give an initial value to these, uh, these signals that you want to wiggle. Now, I generate a clock. And I do that by saying always in five fundamental units, which in 
this case is set to one picosecond, but we don't care because it's just behavioral. The time, time, the time units don't really matter so much. Say, wait five fundamental units, five picoseconds, and assign to clock the negative of the clock. So that will generate a clock as we've seen before, going up and down um, with a period of 10 picoseconds. Um, now, I instantiate basics, right, in my module. I name it basics underscore zero. Now, here I have listed all the stuff that uh, it expects, but I'm only giving it, well, if it's out in output, I can leave it open, and then it will just ignore it. Um, uh, this is an output that I'm actually interested in, so I'm connecting it to a wire. Inputs, it actually, uh, if a module has inputs, you have to put something in there, so, here I care about this um, clock um, button and reset as key, and the, the, the switch I just say it's zero. It's an input. I, I give it a zero. Um, here, as well, other inputs zero, 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 zero. Now I want to start the simulation. So say again, another block of initial begin. Wait a hundred picoseconds, then wait 10 times a uh, particular value, 100, that I set up here, okay. m is equal to 100, set reset to 0, and then set reset to 1. Remember, this is uh, active low, right? By design, uh, is expecting an active low signal, so it starts out as 1, here, and then goes low for 10 times m, right? That's the difference between, uh, no, yes, the difference between uh, this one and this one is uh, 10 times m, and then I'm pressing the button once so I can see the edge of that stuff. So that's what the test bench looked like. Uh, you get fancy, you can have displays, it's, um, uh, in, in terms of inputs and outputs of, uh, to your standard I.O., it's pretty basic, you know. um, Right. Um, so now here, I have uh, my logic. Simulation. So here it just gives me initially the logic, the uh, the signals that I define in my test bench. But I actually want to look inside of the module itself. So I go into my instantiation, basic basic zero here. And I scroll all the way down to look for the signals that I'm interested in. And here we have count, LED out, the button ED, slow clock, reset, and button. So I choose those. And I drag them onto this display. And then I have to restart. Press stop to make it stop. Um, Simulating, um, I want to restart. Okay, I want to give it a decent time to go, and I simulate. So remember, I had in my design resets that gives initial an initial value to the to the registers. Up to then, they're gonna have this red. Mark can say, hey, I, I don't really, no value has been assigned to it yet, so I don't know what to do, and you have uh, an X there. Now you start looking at your signals. So this is the main clock coming in. This is the slow clock, yeah? Uh, 
slow plot. This is reset. Yeah, it's inverted, remember? So we've gone through reset and um, inverted. See the LEDs. And then you see count starting to start counting. I'll leave it in binary. Um, you can you can change it to hex or digit um, decimal. But you see one, two, three starts to count. And then after a while, the button change state. This is the input, yeah? It goes low. Remember, it's active low, but I have an inverted. Button is inverted in my design. It goes high somewhere in the middle of the clock, um, in my main clock. And then here, you get a single pulse out. This is the edge take. You get a single pulse out. This is, remember, by mistake in my diagram, this, this is the right one. Um, you get a single pulse out of the, the uh, edge attack. Okay. Um, I know, again, it's a lot to take in. I've breezed through it. Um, but you'll have this, and you'll be able to look into it and uh, get, get more out of it. Um, that is the end of the handheld portion of this workshop. <laughs> How long did it take me? It meant to take half an hour. Uh, I hope it was useful and that it's enough information for you to feel comfortable to get started. And uh, I hope to get you having something on the board as quickly as possible so you can start uh, doing something meaningful. Uh, good luck. <laughs>